Welcome to another tutorial from Voice First Tech. Today we're going to show you how to submit the app that Voice First Tech built for you on both Amazon Alexa and on Google Assistant. That way your customers can find your app listed and they can start interacting with your business using their voice. Step one, you're going to sign into your AWS Development Console and you're going to go to AWS Lambda. Next you're going to click the Create Function button that was up in the top right to open up this page. You'll author it from scratch and then you'll type in whatever the name is of the function you want to build. So I'll just make this one test function, but you can name it whatever you'd like. You'll choose an existing role and that role will be basic lambda execution. If you don't already have the basic lambda execution role, I'll have a link in the description on how to actually create that role. At once you've done that, you can create the function. Once you've clicked that next button, we will go ahead and actually add the code that Voice First Tech delivered to you. You should have a zip file, so we'll change this to upload a zip file, and you'll click the upload button, and then find the file that you were given. In my case, it's mybusiness.zip. You'll upload that and click save. Once it's finished saving, we'll run a quick test just to make sure everything's working as it should. Go ahead and click the test button in the top left, or the top right, and create a new test event, and we'll search for Alexa. And then we'll just do the start session, and we can name this start event. This will just make sure that we ex that the start event it executes as expected. So when we run this, we click the test button, and we see that we actually were successful. And you can see what a user sees when they natively launch your app. Next step is to actually hook up your applications to this. First one we'll do is Alexa Skills Kit. So you'll click on that, the Alexa Skills Kit on the left side, and you'll see down here now, we actually have to enter in our skill ID, which we don't have yet. So let's go and create our Alexa skill. Go to the Alexa Developer Skills Portal. I'll have this link in the description as well. And then we'll create a new skill. Inside of the skill, we will name it whatever you'd like. I'll name it Test App. And then make sure that it's custom and create the skill. Once the skill is finished loading, you'll see this nice checklist on the side. And we'll actually follow that to create your app. I'll name this Test App and I'll save and build the model and you'll see that when we build we actually get a fail because we don't have any sample utterances yet. So let's go back to the build screen. Next it's asking for our intense samples and slots. Now Voice First Text already built that for you. So you're going to go down to JSON Editor and you're going to upload the interaction model that we gave you. If you go into the app that we delivered to you, the, the business app, you can go into Platforms and then Alexa Skill and then you will see inside of Models and an English version of this. So you can copy that file directly and then you can paste it here. Additionally, you can also just drag and drop that JSON file and then it'll go ahead and build that model for you. You'll click Save and Build and this time we won't have that error. It'll go ahead and build the app for you based off of what was in that JSON file. Once it's done building, we'll go back to the build step to see what else we have to do. And you can see that we actually got two birds with one stone there. We were able to build the model and get our intents and slots. Next step is the endpoint, which we've already set up over here in our other tab. So we're going to go ahead and select AWS Lambda ARN, and then you can see we have our skill ID right here. Copy that to your clipboard and go back over to your app where you can paste it there and add it. We can click Save again, and while it's saving, we can copy the ARN number up here and paste this into our Alexa skill. What this does is ensure that only our skill is able to talk to our backend API. That way nobody with unauthorized access is able to access your, your function. Now that that's saved, we'll go back to the build step and see that everything's completed. We can quickly test our app using the interaction model that we built. We can enable testing and then just type in the name of your app. Entering that, you'll see that we actually get the welcome message and we can interact with our app all the way right here. So I'll learn more just to see what happens. You can interact with your app just as you would expect. Once we fully test it and we're happy with our app, we can go to the distribution tab. Here we will enter the public name, the one sentence description, a detailed description, and more, which are going to be viewed by users when they check out our app in the App Store. Let's kind of compare here. We've got the public name, which is visible here. We then have the one sentence description, which is visible from here. Once you click into the app, you can see that there are programmed uh, phrases that you can use to launch it, which are available right here. These are your sample phrases. 
Next, you need the icons for your app. You need a large icon and then also a small icon. And the specifics for that are actually pretty exact. You need 512 by 512 and 108 by 108 pixels, uh, respectively. You need to select a category, and a couple keywords are definitely going to be good to improve your search engine optimization. My test app are, is going to be great as keywords. Privacy policy, if you have one, or terms of use, be sure to include those, and then you can save and continue. If your app allows people to spend money, be sure to check yes, and continue to fill out this information about your application. Submit that export certification and let them know if it is a Jovo app that uh, we use the Jovo framework. Most of our clients do use the Jovo framework, but if your app required uh, strictly Alexa or strictly Google, we did build those separately. You can then save and continue and go over to the certification tab. If you'd like to leave your app only for yourself or for your coworkers, make it Alexa for business organizations. If you want it to be accessible to the public, be sure to check public. And if you want to isolate to specific countries, you can even isolate your release to specific countries. And then continue. Now I'm not actually going to submit this one, but you'll be able to see all of the steps that you're missing. For me, it's that I missed a lot of the checkboxes, so I'll quickly go back and fix those. Now that I've fixed all of the errors, you can see that I can run validation to see if my app actually is valid. I can run the functional test to see if everything functions correctly. And once that's done, I can go to submission. Now that our functional test is passed, we can actually go and submit it for review. And once that's happened, we have officially submitted it for review and we can go over to Google Actions. As you can see down here, it has changed our skill to bin in review and we can just wait to hear back from Alexa or from Amazon. The next step is to go to Dialogflow where we're going to submit our Google Action. Go to the console. You'll be prompted to sign in, so sign in with whatever Google account you would like to have full ownership of your Google app. The next thing you're going to do is actually create an agent. So for this agent, I'm going to just make it voice demo, or I'll make it voice first tech. You can create that agent. Oh, can't have white spaces, so we can make it with hyphens instead. Once it's done setting that up, you'll see the basic intents, but we want to add in the intents that we've already created with Voice First Tech. So we'll go to Settings, Export and Import, and then Restore from Zip. You'll already see that we have a dialogflowagent.zip in here, which we can upload to our agent. You'll need to type Restore into the box in all caps, and then you can Restore. Once you've done that, you can go back to your intents and see that it's actually updated with all of the intents that we added. Now we need to actually fulfill it with APIs from our AWS Lambda. So we'll go to fulfillment for that. In here, I have my Jovo webhook right now, and I need to change that to my AWS Lambda function. For that, we need to create an API gateway. Head back to AWS and go to the API gateway. You'll create a new API, and then you can make this name whatever you'd like, and create that API. Once you've created it, we need to create a new method to accept all of the post requests that Google Assistant sends. We'll create that post request and then we'll make it execute from a Lambda function. That Lambda function, you need to get the name of. I just right click, open link in new tab, and then you can go back here and go back to your Lambda to find the name. Once you've gotten the name, paste it in there, click save, and you'll be prompted to confirm. Click OK, and then it'll set up that post request. Now we need to deploy the API. We'll deploy it in a new stage which we'll call testing. Once that API has been deployed, we'll get an endpoint which we can copy and paste directly into Dialogflow. Once we've pasted that, we can save, and now we can test it in Google Assistant. In Google Assistant, it's very easy to click Talk to my test app, and then it'll automatically engage your application for you. For some reason, it seems there's been a bug recently with Google Assistant. They won't display the current or the launch screen on here. Instead, it's down here. You can expand it to actually see what the interaction says. Once you're happy with how your app tests, you can go into the overview stage. Here you'll see all of the steps you need to actually get your app certified and published on the Assistant directory. First, we'll go to Invocation. You'll put in the display name for what other people will see, and you can actually select the type of voice that you want your app to have. 
If you've developed a personality for your app, you're going to want to make that selection there. Otherwise, you can pick specifically whatever voice you'd like, or you can just have it match the user's language setting. Once we're done with that, we'll go down to Actions. On this page, we'll be able to see a full list of actions which can be accessed directly without having to interact with your app. So for example, if you have a screen for a form, if you have an intent, a form intent, which allows users to submit their phone number or email to be contacted, and you want them to be able to access that without having to go through the regular interaction model of your app, you can add the action here and actually get them from Dialogflow. Customizing your theme gives you the option to act actively use background colors, primary colors, and other marketing techniques to really brand your app as your own. The deploy section is where we're going to do the majority of our work to get this listed on the Google Assistant directory. Just like the Amazon Alexa tab, you'll need to enter in a short description, you'll need to enter in a long description, and then a couple sample invocations, an image, and other aspects. I've already got these saved, so I'm just going to go ahead and quickly add this in. We can add in all of our information, including our privacy policy in terms of service. We'll go into additional information to add in the category and complete additional information. Once that's done, be sure to click Save, and then we'll move on to the next option, Location Targeting. I generally recommend that you target all 213 countries, that way you can expand your reach to the largest audience possible, but if you want to target a more unique market or a more specific list of countries, you can definitely narrow your search. Click Save and go to Surface Capabilities. Here you can select if it requires uh, this is different from using, but if it requires. So if your app is unable to function without any of these, without an audio output, screen output, media, or web browser, you can select that here. Click Save, and then we'll go to the release. We can go ahead and submit this for production. And we've tested it, and we've read through the launch checklist, so we can submit it for review. Once we've done that, we can see that both our Alexa and our Google skill are both released and under review. Now that you've got your app all built and it's already submitted to the Assistant Directory and the Amazon Alexa store, you're done. If any problems occur, be sure to contact Voice First Tech or contact us in the comments. If you have any other questions, message us in the comments. We have links in the description for all of the resources you'll need. Otherwise, have fun and enjoy the new business.